Hey guys, tonight we're going to be doing the stock analysis on a company called Utah Medical Products, a fundamentally sound company which has fallen to its annual low price. You know I break my stocks down into three tiers. Three star is the most fundamentally sound, two stars is beneath that, and one star is the least but still considered fundamentally sound. Well, this is a three star. Yahoo Analysis does not give an estimate on what this stock can move up to, but it's currently at $74.18 a share. And my analysis, my analysis based on PE is that it can move up to $98.53 in the next 12 months. So having said that, let's now jump into the fundamentals on this stock. Okay, Utah Medical Products ticker symbol is UTMD. Now, over the last five years, let's look at where their price has gone. In 2018, at their low price, they was at $68.97. At their high price, they were at $106.54. That was an increase of 54.47% during the course of the year. In 2019, they were at $72.08 at their low price, $102.21 at their high price. That was an increase of $41.81% of, of during the course of the year. In 2020, this is COVID lockdown year. They were at $72.28 at their low price, $101.48 at their high price. That was an increase of 40.40% during the course of the year. In 2021, they were at $78.28 during their, um, in their low price, $119.26 at their high price. That was an increase of $52.35% of during the course of the year. And in 2022, they were at $79.16 in their low price, $100.23 at their high price. That was an increase of 26.62% during the course of the year. So currently we see that they're at $74.18 in after hours today. But if we look at the estimate where I feel the stock can go to based on PE, which is 98.53, and we look at the low price that I caught them at, 73.93, with a earnings per share of 4.58. We can actually speculate, now this is projected, we don't have the 2023 figures yet, but this is projected for what we feel they can move up to this year. We feel that they can increase by 33.27% from their low price to their high price. So from the current price of $74.18 to a high of $98.53. Now, one thing to notice for this stock in 2021, at the high price, it was at $119.26. In 2022, it dropped to $100.23. And now the estimate for this year 
is $98.53. Meaning, if this is a stock you're considering for the long term, you may want to consider again because as far as over years, we see it decreasing for the last two, probably three years. It was probably around the same range last year. Now, the this company, their next earnings report is in April of 23, April 23rd of 24. Um, we know that we've had a few earnings reports of stocks on our watch list just recently. They've worked out well, but they can also work out very bad. We've had um, Hershey, which I believe dropped, it was either today or, or yesterday. We had Young China Holdings, and both of those worked out well. But the earnings report for this one isn't until April 23rd. And if we want to go to the income statement, we see in 2018, this company made 41998000 and of that, they retained an astounding 44.18% in profits after paying all expenses. It was 18, 18,555,000. In 2019, they made 46,904,000. And of that, after paying all expenses, they retained 14727000 which is a profit margin of 31.40%. In 2020, they made 42178000 which is a profit um, and retained 10798000 after paying all expenses, which is a profit margin of 25.60%. In 2021, they made 49,054,000 and retained after paying expenses 14,788,000, which is a profit margin of 30.15%. And in 2022, they made 52,281,000 and retained 16,473,000 after paying all expenses, which is a profit margin of 31.51%. So even though the profit margin dipped in 2020, it dipped down to 25.60 and then with the exception of 2018 and 2020 it stayed in that 30 range that's a pretty spectacular profit margin that's a very good profit margin for a lot of companies you may see them in the 10 percent range or they're doing well if they hit the 20 percent range these guys are staying around 30 percent so that's a very good profit margin, in my opinion. Now let's look at their return on equity. And in 2018, they had 20.85%. In 2019, they had 14.57%. In 2020, they had 10.50%. In 2021, they had 13.80%. And in 2022, they had 14.42%. So that's what I would consider 
decent or okay. Not it's spectacular, but I consider that decent or okay. But what is very impressive to me is their debt to equity. 12.11% in 2018. 8.60% in 2019, 8.68% in 2020, 7.93% in 2021, and 8.42% in 2022. And with a debt to equity like that, that would tell me that their balance sheet is pretty spectacular. And if we look at their balance sheet, we see that their current assets are way below. Their, their current liabilities are way below their current assets. And their total liabilities are way below their total assets. That tells me that this company could probably survive for years without new money coming in. They're very secure with their balance sheet. They do pay a dividend. So in 2018, they paid four billion twenty-six million out in dividends. In 2019, they paid four. I'm sorry. In 2018, they paid four million twenty-six thousand in dividends. In 2019, they paid four million one hundred and twelve thousand in dividends. In 2020, they paid four million one hundred and sixteen thousand. In 2021, they paid eleven million four hundred and sixty-five thousand. And in 2022, they paid three million one hundred and sixty-three thousand. Now let's look at their free cash flow. And we want to see if that free cash flow puts them in a good condition to pay that dividend. So in 2018, they had 17,294,000 in free cash flow. In 2019, they had 16,516,000 in free cash flow. In 2020, they had 19,277,000 in free cash flow. In 2021, they had 20,651,000 in free cash flow. And in 2022, they had 20,338,000 in free cash flow. After the money that they set aside for these dividends, in 2018, they had 13,268,000 left over. 2019, they had 12,404,000 left over. In 2020, they had 15,161,000 left over. In 2021, they had 9,186,000 left over. And in 2022, they had 17,175,000 left over. So they do give a dividend. They can afford to give that dividend. And if we jump down to the bottom, this company has a low beta, 0 0.14. Their last dividend, which they paid out, was 30 cents per share. But they have... 3.63 million in outstanding shares. I know that sounds like a lot of money overall, 
But if you consider the amount of shares that a lot of companies give out, 20 million, 30 million, 50 million, 100 million, I've even seen a couple with a billion outstanding shares, 3 million is considerably small. 3.63 million outstanding shares. And of those 3.63 million, 6.47% are owned by insiders, those who work in or in, are involved with the company. That's a pretty high percentage and means that people working in the company have confidence in it. And 72.90% are owned by institutions. This company has a dividend yield of 1.60%. Kevin L. Corwell, Mr. Kevin L. Kevin L. Cornwell, born 1947, is the chairman, CEO, president, and secretary. And he was appointed on 11-30, November 30th of 1992. Now, the age is a little concerned. Because if he's the chairman, CEO, president, and secretary, I'm pretty sure he's of sound mind. But as we get older, we're not necessarily of sound body. And the concern is... If he should be departed from us, forgive the how I put it forward, but who would take over? And how would the markets respond to that kind of a change? Having said that, Utah Medical Products is in the medical instruments and supplies industry and the healthcare sector. Medtronic, Johnson & Johnson, and Abbott are the largest medical device companies. Okay. So that's it for our or my analysis on this company, guys, Utah Medical Products. Look forward to speaking to you in the next video.